everyone, I'm Dan Saavedra, founder of MergerData.com, and Tableau just released version 2023.1. And so in this video, we're going to dive into the top new features in Tableau Desktop for end users and for developers. I've been developing in Tableau for about 10 years now, so I like to go over each feature release and talk about why it makes life easier and why it's a big improvement. So let's dive in. Now, as we go through features here, it's not in any particular order. All the features for this release are really useful. And so we're just going to jump into each one, but I think that they're all pretty big impact on day-to-day -day work. So the first new feature is the accelerator data mapping feature. And Tableau released accelerators uh, a few versions ago, and you know they were pretty, pretty nice. Um, but the main difficulty with using them was being able to insert your own data sets. It was a little bit clunky, took a little bit of time, and so it was really a blocker to adopt uh, accelerators in general. Now, if you've never used accelerators before, you can click on that More Accelerators button while you're in the Connect window uh, of Tableau Desktop. So if you just click on that, it'll bring up the library of the accelerators, and you can scroll through and see that a lot of them don't have too many downloads for how much Tableau is used, and I think that's a good indicator of the fact that it was so difficult to put your own data sources in them. So I think with the this new feature here, it'll be much, much more heavily adopted, especially with standard data sources like Google Analytics or something like that. But I'm gonna show you how this feature works really quickly just so you can see the power of it. I'll select financial statement and then click on open. And it takes a little bit to open up the actual uh, accelerator here. And so I'm gonna give it a little bit while it opens. But you'll see how easy it is to just replace your data source and then map each of the fields to what exists in the current dashboard. And so it finally loaded here. And what will happen is this data mapper will pop up. And then you can just click on Get Started in order to take the next steps to map data. If for whatever reason you close out of it by clicking Not Now or it doesn't show up, you can always go up here to Data and then Open Data Mapper and then that'll open up this window as well. So we're gonna click on get, get Started here, and you can see that I don't have any data connected, so I'm going to do that. Click on Connect to Data. I'm gonna click on More to a file, just for this example. I'm gonna uh, pick this random hospital prices one. Click OK. And then once Tableau loads that, it's gonna walk me through a couple more steps here. So we're just giving it some time here load. Now that the window popped up, you can see that it actually just opens up the fields that are used in the dashboard. And then we can click from our data source and map dimensions to dimensions and measures to measures. Um, if the field types don't match, it'll give you a warning and it won't let you select it. So you just got to make sure that your data model has the correct um, data types while you're importing. So that's pretty much it. You map each field, click on replace data, and then it replaces the actual data in the dashboard. So that's the first feature. The second feature is one that's also a big time saver. Um, if you've been developing in Tableau for a while, you know that making access titles dynamic can be a struggle. And so instead, I have this sample workbook. I'm gonna show you exactly what this feature is all about. If you have a worksheet built and you use parameters to swap measures or whatever use case you might have, you can actually configure the axis to dynamically change with the parameters. So this really opens up a lot of opportunities in terms of labeling, makes the formatting a lot easier for the developer. And so I have this configured right now, but if you were to configure this from scratch, then you would cl right click the axis, click on edit axis, and then down here, it would be set to custom. So this would be sales based off of what I have dropped onto the canvas here. But all I would do is go down here and change it to the parameter that I want the title to fill as. And so it'd be dynamic title here. And that's pretty much it. And so when I go to change the dynamic title, let's say a user is swapping out the parameter here, then you can see that on the side, title one, two, and three is changing as I change the parameter. So it's a really easy way to configure dynamic titles. Um, one of the team members at MergerData.com made a, a quick one minute video that I'd really encourage you to check out. She did a great job on it, just showing this feature and the setup and a use case for it. Uh, so that's a really neat new feature, saves a lot of time. The next big feature release is the user attribute functions. This is a more advanced feature and if you're in the corporate world, it's something you might've run into if 
you uh, sell dashboards or sell access to dashboards or have it embedded in a product. And that's a user attribute function. And there's two of them here. So you have user attribute and user attribute includes. And so basically this opens up the possibility to filter by things other than the username or by the uh, groups that users are on in Tableau server. And so I'm gonna go over to the new features page just to show you exactly what I mean. On this page, you can see that it mentions uh, that it lets you use users attributes defined during the connected apps login flow in calculations. So before when you did row level security, you would have to place people into specific groups on Tableau server, Tableau cloud, in order to use any type of user function and filter on the rows. And so what this enables you to do is just have more flexibility in row level security so that you don't have to go through the hassle of segmenting off access in your actual data source and defining different data sets for different users based off of certain dynamic rules. So that was a really broad and general statement, but in general, if you have a complex environment where you have um, segmented access to data sets, depending on uh, a user's attributes, then before you have to set up an entire thing for service accounts and customize how you're publishing dashboards uh, with those service accounts to make sure that user access was restricted. And what this enables you to do is make that more dynamic without having to go through the steps of segmenting off account access at the data level and then publishing that at scale with dashboards. So that was just off the top of my head there. I'm not sure how much sense that made. Um, just talking off the top of my head, it's a definitely a more advanced feature set, but it really opens up the possibility for filtering dashboards at a row level based off of various attributes. So it's really useful for complex use cases like that. Okay, the next two are data source specific, but they are very big changes. And I'll just stay in this new features window to describe them. Um, number one, cross database joins. For Snowflake, this opens up a lot of opportunities. It changes the amount of data engineering that you need to do in order to prepare data sources before they hit Tableau. So this will be really useful and open up additional capabilities for people who use Snowflake data sets or databases. And then the other big feature is the Google Drive shared file support. So this was a huge headache if you ever use shared files inside of Google Drive. And now this is available. So if you have shared files with your Google account that you're using to authenticate, you'll now be able to access them in Tableau. Huge deal, uh, huge pain for a lot of people before this existed. And last but not least, there is the publish to personal space feature. Uh, this is a big deal just for testing in general. If you don't want other people to see what your workbook updates look like, and you don't want it to go through the configuration options of restricting access to a bunch of people just so you can see it and no one else. Uh, now you can actually just publish to this personal space and see how things render on different devices. You can see how they look when they're actually published to cloud or to server. And so that's really, really easy to configure this I'm just going to show you really quickly how you can do that in Tableau Desktop. It's really easy. You click on Server, Publish Workbook, and when you go to actually publish the workbook under Location, you will select Personal Space. And that's pretty much it. And now you can publish to Personal Cloud. You can just keep that as your online repository for your workbooks. You can test with it. It's awesome. So that's pretty much it. That's the top new features in Tableau 2023. One, Tableau keeps adding great product updates, keeps making development easier for everyone, keeps taking away workarounds in a good way by solving for them instead. I think that the product's still heading in a great direction and it's just becoming easier as a developer to make dashboards that are impactful for end users. Before I sign off here, I just want to reiterate one of the newer features that have, it's been around a little bit now, um, but data guide is just a really powerful feature that I see a lot of people missing out on, and it's something that is incredibly useful in terms of automated insights. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to dive into it deeper. Uh, once again, I'm Dan Savedra, founder of MergerData.com. Thanks for watching.